Dancaster Dundas. It's now time for member statements. I recognize the member from Markham Unionville. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker, I'm delighted to share with the House a heartwarming celebration of Mother's Day from my riding of Markham Unionville. This Mother's Day, I introduced a special certificate to recognize the outstanding mothers in our community. The response was overwhelming. We received numerous nominations from individuals, families, and organizations, all eager to celebrate their mothers, wives, grandmothers, and sisters. It was a wonderful opportunity to honor the incredible women who built and nurtured our community through their love for their children and families. This initiative served not only as a celebration, but as a vivid reminder of the unique and unconditional nature, nurture, nature of a mother's love. It highlights the resilience, care, selflessness that define the amazing mothers among us. I'm grateful for the enthusiastic participation from the families in Markham Unionville. The encouragement has made this Mother's Day truly memorable. Such community spirit reinforces the values that strengthen Ontario and supports the fabric of our shared lives. Let's continue to celebrate and support the pivotal roles of mothers in our community, not just on Mother's Day, but every day. Thank you, Speaker. The statements are recognized the member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Residents of the City of Port Coburg commemorated the 50th anniversary of its designation as a fair trade town last week at the Farmer's Market. Port Coburn was the first municipality in Ontario to achieve this certification in 2009. Now over 2.1 million Canadians reside in 16 fair trade towns across the country. According to the Fair Trade Program, becoming designated as a fair trade town is a great way to unite your local population with the global community of fair trade advocates by making a commitment to support the principles of fair trade through ethical and sustainable purchasing choices. At the annual Top Hat Ceremony, which signifies the opening of the Welland Canal and the start of the shipping season, the city's Fair Trade Committee and its members host the popular Fair Trade Pancake Breakfast every year as the first ship passes through the canal. Those looking to support Port Coburn's fair trade should visit the local market at 59 Charlotte Street every Friday from 7 to 12 p.m. Speaker, I would be remiss if I didn't congratulate all levels of government, the City of Port Coburn, and Niagara's project team in landing a $1.6 billion lithium-ion battery separator plant investment uh, announced yesterday. Great news on a productive Niagara week here at the Ontario Legislature. Thank you, Speaker. For the member statements, I recognize the member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. This weekend, I attended the Cornwall Curling Centre's Italian Night Fundraiser. The sold-out venue of 300 supporters enjoyed a delicious six-course meal, lots of wine and live music by the count country lads on the curling pads. The overwhelming support of this evening allowed the Cornwall Curling Centre to donate funds to each of their two teams headed to the Seniors Nationals this August in Quebec City. The Cornwall Curling Club is one of the oldest curling clubs in Ontario. The earliest recorded curling activity in and around Cornwall area was in the 1850s. Its initial stages, curling was played on the St. Lawrence River. Our curlers now enjoy six beautiful sheets of ice where curlers of all ages enjoy the great sport. The centre offers a large variety of leagues that accommodate a wide range of curlers. Speaker. Whether you're a rec recreational player or a competitive one, if you're 6 or 96 or anyone in between, the Cornwall Curling Club has a league for you. I cannot stress the importance of the club in our community. It is a place where our seniors go to keep active and socialize. The sport of curling is also thriving with our youth. Curling is a game of strategy, finesse and strength which brings our community together. I would, invite, I would like to invite anyone who is interested in seeing some of the world's best curlers to come to the Shorty Jenkins Classic that is held every September in Cornwall. Last year, the Classic welcomed some of the best curlers in the world, Speaker. I look forward to this year's Classic and hope to see some of you there. Thank you, Speaker. For the member statements, I recognize the member for Waterloo. Thank you. Uh, this afternoon, we were supposed to be debating my private member's bill, Lydia's Law, and this government chose to silence the voice of survivors. The justice system is failing survivors. Mm -hmm. 
uh, especially of sexual violence. In 2022 alone, 1,326 cases of sexual assault were thrown out before the trial date. Behind the number are survivors who will not get their day in court. For a government that claims to be tough on crime, this government has denied justice to so many survivors and their loved ones. They have deliberately starved the justice system. For the survivors who have the courage to come forward, court backlogs, unavailable courtrooms, and staffing shortages mean that many do not get their day in court and never see justice. A few years ago, I received a desperate call from Lydia's mum. She was reaching out to help her daughter. She told me my daughter was sexually assaulted, and one of the bravest things she ever did was come forward about it and file a police report. Lydia asks this legislature, how do we expect young girls and women to have faith in the system? Why would they report knowing how painful the court experience is? Our goal with this bill is to answer Lydia's question of what can we do to help so that the Ontario's uh, justice system no longer fails survivors because every survivor deserves justice. They say you can curse the darkness or light a candle. Lydia's law was that candle. Member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member for Brampton West. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This past weekend, on May 12th, we celebrated Mother's Day. On Mother's Day, we recognize the immeasurable contributions that mothers make to our lives and society as a whole. Mothers play a vital role in shaping our world, not only through our, their nurturing and guidance within families, but also their influence as leaders, educators, and contributors in all aspects of society. Mother's Day provides us with an opportunity to express our gratitude for the love, sacrifice, and unwavering support that mothers offer every day. It is a day to honor their resilience, strength, courage, and boundless love. As we celebrate Mother's Day, let us also recognize the progress we have made in supporting mothers and families while acknowledging the ongoing challenges they face. It's essential that we continue working towards creating a society where every mother is empowered to fulfill her potential and thrive. Speaker, on this special day, let us come together to celebrate the invaluable contributions made by mothers to make this world a better place to live, and let's cherish their invaluable role in our lives. Happy Mother's Day to all the incredible mothers out there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Each one of us is on a personal mental health journey. We all face different challenges at different times. Through the years, there has often been stigma associated with mental health. We've made great strides in overcoming that stigma, but this is only a piece of the puzzle. What is most important is ensuring that someone who is struggling in this province has the resources and supports they need. Building a robust and accessible mental health care system, one without wait lists or financial barriers, is the work that remains ahead of all of us. Whether it is a crisis of acute mental distress or a lifelong struggle to find balance, we all deserve a government that funds the resources we need when we need them. In Durham Region, we are very fortunate to have strong voices who advocate for mental health and youth mental wellness. I am happy to welcome Mike Shoreman back to Queen's Park. Folks here will know Mike as the adventurous spirit who overcame physical and mental obstacles to become the first person with disabilities to cross the five Great Lakes by stand-up paddleboard. Across Lakes Erie, Huron, Superior, Michigan and Ontario, Mike used his platform to sound the alarm on the youth mental health crisis in Canada, and he has not stopped. Young people are consistently facing barriers to the mental health care that they deserve. When youth have the courage to reach out, Ontario needs to be there with the excellent professional care and support that we are capable of providing. For Mental Health Week 2024, the CMHA chose the theme of compassion, the kindness which connects us all. So I call on the government to recognize the power of compassion and invest in the mental well-being of all young Ontarians. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Whilst spring is here and summer is approaching, I'd like to share the beauty of my Scarborough Centre riding and the five great ways to experience 
its diverse culture and richness. The Aga Khan Museum showcases Islamic art, culture, and heritage through its extensive collection and engagement, engaging exhib exhibits. We have the Thompson Memorial, uh, sorry, Thompson Memorial Park Beauty Vegetation Historic and Calm provides a peaceful atmosphere. Discover the new Scarborough Town Center for a variety of shopping and options. Scarborough Historical Museum provides insight into the area. Finally, the severe culinary de delicacy from all over the world in the bustling Kennedy Lawrence Elsmere Avenue road strip which is home uh, to the variety of ethnic restaurants and cafe. As the elected representative for Scarborough Center, it is my pleasure to welcome all, on behalf of my constituents, organizations, and business, to explore the richness of our offerings, where we will celebrate the 20th anniversary of Taste of the Lawrence Block Party, which will take place on July 7th to the 9th, Scarborough Rip Fest in Thompson Park, and my grand annual community picnic and barbecue. All are invited. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Don Valley East. Mr. Speaker, in Don Valley East, thousands of people do not have a family doctor. Meanwhile, my riding has hundreds of foreign trained doctors who can't get, who can't get credentialed in Ontario. Doctors who are forced to sit on the sidelines when they should be on the front lines. Our local hospital, Michael Guerin Hospital, is bursting above capacity. We have insufficient acute care beds to meet our current needs, let alone the projected needs, as my riding sees unprecedented development around the intersection of two new public transit lines. We're in desperate need of funding for expansion and upgrades, and we're not getting it. But if the situation is dire in Don Valley East, it's worse in northern and rural Ontario. Even fewer have access to primary care, and hospitals are collapsing one by one. Minden, Muskoka, Strathroy, Middlesex, and now Durham Hospital. It started with sporadic ER closures, then more regular ones. Now their emergency room is only open 12 hours a day. And this is because this government has ushered in the worst healthcare worker shortage in our province's history. And last week, the Minister of Health had the audacity to say she's not concerned about it. Now it has suddenly been announced that all of Durham Hospital's inpatient beds will be removed in a couple of weeks. No warning, no consultation, and no conversation. Today, the mayor of the municipality of West Grey and over 60 Durham residents have travelled to Queen's Park to express their opposition to this decision, which will compromise diagnostic testing, cause doctors to leave, and put patient care at risk. Mr. Speaker, the people of northern and rural Ontario and across our province deserve a government that will protect their health care system and give them answers, fully fund health care, and stop the closures. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Thornhill. Speaker. May is uh, Jewish and Asian Heritage Month. It's time to recognize both Jewish and Asian communities and the significant role in developing Thornhill, Ontario, and Canada as a whole. They have been one of the largest communities in my riding of Thornhill, and the Asian community is actually, uh, we have one of the largest in Ontario. But Speaker, there's so many ways where both communities intersect. This week, I attended the opening of the Cultural Canvas Exhibition, which is a Jewish and Chinese perspective, and it showcased amazing local artists, including a musical duo composed of a classical guitarist and a traditional pipa, also known as a Chinese musical lute. And the two musicians have been playing together for years, seamlessly harmonizing the two distinct instruments. And the historical connection between the Jewish and Asian communities dates back centuries. For instance, there's been an, a long-standing Jewish presence in China with records indicating the arrival of Jewish merchants and settlers during the ancient times. Additionally, uh, during World War II, Shanghai served as a safe haven for thousands of Jewish refugees fleeing persecution in Europe. In fact, Jewish uh, people living in the city of Kaifeng prayed in their synagogue in both Hebrew and Mandarin. 
I want to thank the Successful Women's Council along with the Jewish Women's Club for putting this amazing and unique experience forward. This exhibit is now featured at the Bathurst Clark Resource Library in Thornhill. In a world that often emphasizes our differences, it's crucial to remember the strength that comes from standing united. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Renfrew, Nipissing Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. It was a great day on May 1st in the city of Pembroke in Riverside Park on the shores of the majestic Ottawa River, such that the services of the Reverend Dave Henderson, the local town crier, kicked off the ceremony with his customary, oh, yay, oh, yay. <laughs> it was there that the former fled Fred Blackstein Boulevard was renamed First Responders Way. May 1st was, of course, chosen to correspond with First Responders Day here in the province of Ontario. Fred Blackstein, a member of the Order of Canada, had approached the city earlier this year and suggested his name be removed from the street and the street being renamed in honour of first responders. I could go on for hours about the contributions of Mr. Blackstein, but this just serves as another example of his selflessness. The ceremony was well attended by the members of the public and representatives of each group of first responders that we depend on so greatly each and every day. Speaker, whether it is police, fire, paramedics, ER doctors or nurses, and of course our military, it is the dedication and commitment of our first responders that allow us to feel safe during the day and sleep better at night, knowing they have our backs. For most of us, what they do every single day goes largely unnoticed until we need them. But, Speaker, it is tremendously comforting to know that if the situation calls for it, they will be there. I want to thank the City of Pembroke for making this happen and, of course, Mr. Blackstein for his kind gesture. But, Speaker, above everything else, I want to thank each and every one of our first responders for their unwavering commitment to making our lives safer and better. This renaming in Pembroke recognizes that in a tangible way. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.